What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Cultic. This is another super grimdark boomer shooter that's set in the early 1900s. Apparently, along the timeline, that is the place to be right now. Although the last time we covered one of these games, it was Forgive Me Father. This one is not... Forgive Me Father is like Cthulhu related, sort of Lovecraftian. Uh, this one's quite a bit darker and a bit more like the hills have eyes, if you've ever seen. Like, there's a cult, they've taken over, like, a compound or something, and this one gets pretty grisly and violent pretty quickly, and there's not a whole lot of cartooniness to it. It's just all-out gnarly. And so, anyways, I'm a big fan of that. I've been playing first-person shooters since Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein 3D, that is, now that there's all the new ones and everything. And I've been a big fan of everything from Redneck Rampage to, like, Rise of the Triad. I've played it all. I liked it all. I was a big, big first-person shooter kid back in the Pentium 1 days. And so I'm just absolutely loving this boomer shooter return back to my childhood. They are targeting nostalgia, and I am falling for it hook, line, and sinker. I don't even hesitate. I just bite the hook, and I'm like, okay, I guess I've been caught. So we're going to check out the demo here today. This is a freely available demo. Anybody that's watching this video can go get it right now. There have been a number of demos for this game. I didn't play the earlier ones because the color palette was really weird and sort of like sepia and like washed out. But like this newest demo, they seem to have done some kind of color correction and fiddled around with it a little bit. And so anyways, I'm really, really liking it. I've actually played through the demo and enjoyed it tremendously, so I figured I would share it with all of you here today. If after watching this you wanted to get the demo for yourself, i got a link for you down below in the description so that you can take a look at that. And then on top of that, you can also take a look down below and you'll get access to my Discord, my Twitch stream, all that kind of fun stuff. Pretty normal guy, hang out on my Discord pretty much all day long, and so you're more than welcome to swing on through and be like, hello, and I'll be like, hey, awkwardly. And that's how our entire interaction will go. Uh, let's go ahead and start the demo. We will put this thing on standard, I guess? I don't know. Nah, put it on hard, bro. Ramp it up, dude. Hurt me plenty. That's the stuff right there. Okay, so judging from the pictures right there, I skipped that when I came through because I was just trying to get a feel for the game. Apparently this is in the 60s. I saw the weaponry and thought it was like the early 1900s. I don't know, you pick up like a, you pick up like a, well I guess I could have looked at the vehicles and everything too. Anyways, let's grab this axe over here. What you really need to understand is that I have a terrible reckoning of timelines and don't really pay attention to details. Game takes place in the mid 60s, not the early 1900s. Probably should have known that from this truck over here. I don't know. I was looking more at the weapon sets. Like, there's, like, a double-barreled shotgun, and there's, like, a C-96. And so I figured, like, yeah, kind of like early 1900s, like, gangster period. You know what I mean? Like, 1920, 1930, and there's somewhere. Apparently, we're considerably in front of that because that car we were driving was definitely one of those late 60s models. Oh, what's up, cultists? How you doing in here? Hey, what's up, boys? I don't think they're happy to see me. They might be a little bit upsetty spaghetti. Let's go ahead and have like ourselves a rowdy little hatchet fight right here at the beginning. There we go. Nothing like a good hatchet fight to start out a Tuesday morning. All right. Uh, you can break these crates and stuff. You don't always find stuff inside of them, but it is doable. We've got a door over here. Apparently, we can open this one on up, and this guy has been killed by apparently an addiction to toilet tomato soup. Well... I think the red is kind of just baked in. I think it was an aesthetic choice. 
Uh, the door won't budge. I need a key to get on in there. It looks like there's some kind of, like, maybe a Thompson or something. It's hard for me to tell. Actually, from the angle, it looks like it's got a side-mounted magazine, so maybe like a grease gun or something? I don't know. I couldn't get in there when I was playing around last time. All right, so that's healing right there, and now we've got ourselves a good old C96. There we go. We took him out. We do need to be... Oh! I'm going to get back here because he's got a gun. The gray ones have guns. The red ones have shotguns. The gray ones have pistols. The brown ones have axes. Absolutely not. There we go. But that did revitalize the old uh, ammunition stock here. Oh, dude, there's a bunch of bullets in there, too. Woo. Okay, let's click on the draw on that one. We're all right. We're all right. Uh, you do have an inventory in this game. I wouldn't say that it's quite as in-depth as something like System Shock, but you do have an inventory. We will get, like, consumables and things that we have on us. That seems dangerous. There we go. We'll just kick that bad boy open. You have entered a secret area, also with a flushable toilet. That's called attention to detail right there. My guess is that this is steam that probably hurts me. And so you gotta, like, slide rush under it. Ooh, yeah, some parts of the world can be destroyed with explosivos. Like the sound of that. Uh, let me, yeah, let me get my, let me get my explosivos out. I wonder if I can blow the door off right there. Oh, I guess I didn't light it, did I? My bad. Okay, there we go. Uh, it doesn't look like it blew the oh it blew the wall open back there I was trying to bro I was trying to blow the gate off but it blew the wall open sweet I found a secret that I did not find the last time I was messing around we got a sten gun oh that's pretty cool dude that's not a gun you see very often in video games the old uh, World War II sten gun I think it was the the Swedes that used the sten gun right like this thing is actually like a piece of refined this it's basically a piece of plumbing that fires fully automatic like it, it's a it's a weapon that was born purely from the desperation of war manufacturing, more or less. All right, so, oh, oh, okay, yeah, that worked pretty good. Yeah, I'll take that. Nope, you ain't shooting me. Oh, I gotta get a new clip, hold on. There we go, new mags in, we're all right. Uh, uses the same rounds as my C96, so that's good to know. Looks like we can't fire through the fence. There are hit zones in this game. Oh, God. I'm getting just absolutely love-tapped right now. Eventually, I'll get that guy. It's taking me a lot of effort right now, though. Eventually, he will go down. We got some first aid. That's good. They hit a lot harder. I beat this on standard, and uh, I'm going to be honest with you. They're a lot nastier on this difficulty than they were on standard. Ah, yes. Yes. My favorite thing to do to use a med kit that I just found, a bunch of bandages. Nothing like band-aids from a trash can to really make the pain go away. Ooh, buddy, that's the stuff right there. I like the reload animation. Reload animations look pretty good on almost all the weapons. I think there's another door we can go into, like right over here. Oh, he was waiting, bro. He got me with that cheese hit. Okay, you're down, you're down, you're down. And I knew that guy was there because I remember him from the last time I came through. There are interactables and stuff, weirdly. A large data recorder. Yeah, there's interactables like this typewriter over here. I don't know if it, like, does anything, but you can make it go all the way down to the end and make it go ding. I don't, I don't know if it affects anything inside the confines of the game world, but it is satisfying and fun to do. Yeah, don't walk around this corner on me. Bye-bye. Have fun being uh, giblets. Oh, look, there's your hand right there. That guy's going to shoot at me. Got him. Got him, too. I think I lucked into a headshot right there. Got him, too. Your accuracy goes down pretty considerably the farther away that you're shooting with most of these guns. Like, they have a very slight vector change, but, like, over long distances, it becomes very, very exaggerated. I don't think that door kicks down. Oh. I think I'm breaking stuff on the other side of the wall. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know if we can dynamite our way in there. This game is just absolutely honeycombed with secrets. 
to the point that you can spend a lot of time just looking for secrets in this game. Like, when I was going through on my first playthrough, I was like, man, there is just stuff everywhere. Like, every time I peek around behind, like, a car or, like, break a random barrel, there's, like, a little trap door that goes down in. Like, definitely look around in this game or you will regret it. Uh, this switch right here opens that, which takes us right back to where we came in in that other place. So, basically, it's a big old loop around. I want to see if I can get into the armory, but, like, I don't know where a good spot to get into the armory would be. I've got one stick of dynamite. We could try to see if maybe it blows up over here. Yeah, we didn't we didn't really get anything going right there, although it might have been blocked by the actual railway, like the the walkway up there. There's got to be a way into the armory. I just don't know what it is. Maybe we'll walk down the side of the building over here and see if we can get in that way. Your character in this game has an absolutely ludicrous vertical jump, by the way. So, like, play around with the jumping. Chances are you're going to find your way. Huh. There's, like, one spot with weird lighting. All right. Dude, did you just throw an axe at me? Don't do that. Stop it. No, don't do that, man. I have, like, a hard and fast rule about having axes thrown at me by random guys in bathrobes. I don't know. It comes from my childhood trauma. I just, I try to be aware of it. There's some more ammo. I'll always take some more ammo. You never know when you're at the break out the old Stenny boy. Uh, yeah, if we go back down this way, it looks like the building extends, so we'll take a look over there. Uh, everything is interactable, by the way. I know I talked about the typewriter, but, like, if we go through and we shoot these lamps, they will go out. If you shoot this right here, it'll set a large area on fire. You can also pick it up and throw it, should you desire to do so. Like so. So there you go. You can throw the lantern. And wherever it lands, it'll, like, light everything on fire. There is a different fatality death animation for the enemies when they die in fire as well. They'll be like, Aah! and they run around just, like, all on fire, catching other people on fire. Sort of action movie style, I guess. I don't know. It's pretty satisfying. This game really does not hold back with, like, the sheer volume of gore that you're going to be able to make happen. I'll put it like that. There is a lot of gore in this game. Uh, it doesn't look like, so there's, like, a barrel right here. And there's a door right here, and we can crawl in, but I'm... This doesn't feel like it takes me to the armory. And I want to go to the armory. Why a random warehouse has an armory? I don't know. I don't know exactly what they're warehousing here. Maybe some kind of military surplus or something? Not super sure. Let me get that guy in the back of the head with the hatchet dude it only takes like two hits to kill him with the hatchet when you're playing on standard difficulty so it looks like they actually get like a an increase in everything on this difficulty mode they deal more damage they take more damage i was actually kind of hoping they would still not be bullet soaks and they would just die as easily as they did on standard oh i thought that i thought the tire was a guy did that guy just throw a dynamite at me i don't know what he just threw at me okay I'm just going to fire wildly in that direction until I hit something. Accuracy by volume. Uh, their bullets also affect each other. I don't know if you noticed that right there, but the guy that was in the back was firing his gun at me. He killed the guy in front of him with his gunshots. And so anyways, the enemy bullets do have presence, which means that you can actually break line of sight by running into a group of melee guys uh, so that the range guys can't really fire at you without killing their own boys. Nothing in the back of that truck right there. Looks like we've got separate directions running off this way, but ammo is getting a little bit light. I would definitely prefer to have more bullets right now. There's 50 in the Sten, which explains where a lot of it went. I don't know if there's actually specifically a way for you to unload weapons or whatever, but... Oh, boy. Yeah, we're just going to have a hatchet fight real quick because my ammo is not looking amazing. I'm going to have a look around up here, though, too, and see if I can find anything in the bushes. Are you bushes of giving or are you bushes of greed? As far as I can tell, they're bushes of greed. Shotgun guy's down. I've been shot again. I don't know why so frequently I end up getting shot on these adventures. Um, I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be. Looks like I kind of just glitched into the bushes. I don't know. 
like maybe you could wander around back there and find something useful, but I'm also kind of afraid. There is a money counter at the bottom of our screen. I don't know exactly what it's going to count for us, but it does imply that at some point there's going to be mercantile exchange. We're going to be able to do like some pecuniary stuff. And so anyways, haven't seen it yet. Don't know if it's available inside the context of the demo. Played the demo for a while. Ooh, a shotgun. Well, I'm glad I came this way. That was a smart decision. So right mouse button fires both barrels. And this is the point at which I have to do a very important test as a gun weirdo. So we fired one shot. There's still one. But when we reload, it ejects both of the shells right there. That's one of those things that I would highly recommend they come up with two different reload animations for. I know it seems like a nitpicky thing, but like I'm kind of like into guns, you know what I mean? And one thing that I've appreciated about a lot of first person shooters over the last couple years is that like if you have a double barreled shotgun, you fire one shell, he opens it up, he pulls one shell, puts one back in. Or like if you've got a wheel gun like a 357 or something, you fire two shots, he actually thumbs in two rounds from the two chambers that were emptied. Like little stuff like that, I feel like it matters to me as a, as a shooter guy. And so like, you don't, oh my god, where the hell did you come from? Okay, nice to meet your acquaintance, douche. You back shooting little bastard. Man, that guy took mad hits. Ooh, good night. And look, his eyeballs fly out. This game's got all kinds of fun gore like that. First aid's good. I like not being hurt. Sure, yeah, you guys like to throw axes. You guys are underneath a roof right now. You can't throw an axe when you're underneath a roof, you idiot. There we go. Let me just head tap you from 30 miles away and laugh as your eyeballs fall on the ground. Definitely reminds me of those old school shooters that were really pushing like that late 90s edginess. Rise of the Triad. Uh, what was the name of the one? Soldier of Fortune. That was the one where you could actually like cut chunks out of people. Uh, the Turok 2 was the first game that I had ever seen that actually had weapon specific hit detection on body parts. Where like arms would get shot off or you could blast a hole in somebody and they'd run around with their ribs sticking out. Like that, that period of first person shooter design got real real grisly. And I feel like this game is actually kind of like grasped upon that pretty well, actually. It, it captures that feeling of those old redneck rampage type games. What's going on over here? I'll tell you what's going on. You're about to be on fire. I just, I had to show you guys the fire animation. I don't know why it entertains me. And then they leave like a smoked out husk laying on the ground after they get done burning out. I don't know, it entertains me, man. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Was there anything across this bridge over here? Like, I know I'm about to get pincered, and I'm about to get my booty touched, but like, oh, this just leads back up to that camp that we were in. It's weird that there's nothing in this camp. Like, I really expected there to be something in this camp, or like, some little secret nook or something. Ow, fire burns. Okay, I just had to test it. I just had to test it. You know how it goes, man. Like, you know how, like, sometimes you play a game and you don't know if there's fall damage or if there's fire damage, like, when you walk over a campfire? Because it's kind of hit or miss. Some games put that stuff in. Some games definitively do not. Well, I have to check. So the first level of any video game is me going down a checklist, like jumping off tall stuff, wounding myself, reloading my save, then running around in fire for a minute, being like, it burns! You know, it's, I have to. I can't help myself. I need a key card. Okay, yeah, that's... Don't know what he just said. Pretty sure it was Latin or something, but I'm gonna reload the Sten gun just in case I need some real bulletry out here. All right, enemies, where are you at? I've got killing in my blood. I'm gonna see if they walk over this way and get lit on fire. Uh, it does sound like they all walked into the fire, which was actually pretty convenient for me. Oh, 
okay. All right, a little bit of a high flyer right there. I respect it, though. Take him out with the axe real quick since I don't really have a whole lot of ammo to go around. Uh, there's a... Oh, I thought it was a shotgun. It's a pickaxe. Okay. I don't know if there's items inside some of these locations. There is a secret down in here, by the way. I checked it when I was playing last time. There's like a little butthole. There's like a little stone butthole underneath the water fountain. And, uh... You know, there, there's a gate over here. I don't, I don't know. I never found the key. I looked around a bunch. Never found a key that went in there. I did find a mine key at one point where the game took like a really dark turn. And I'm kind of wondering if we're going to get there by the time we run out of time. I've been playing this a lot slower than my first run through because I've been sort of like doing my YouTuber thing where I'm looking for stuff to critique or whatever. But honestly, aside from some weird collision and like some map boundaries that are not like fully bound or whatever... I haven't really found any issues. Like, there's been a couple spots where I'm obviously up inside of an area where I'm not supposed to be uh, when it comes to, like, the the boundaries of the map or whatever. But, like, other than that, it hasn't really been that big of a deal. Everything feels pretty good. Oh, speaking of which, when those guys throw axes, we have been picking up their axes off the ground, and if you have extra axes, you can throw them. It's like a, a secondary thing you can do like so. I don't particularly know how much damage it does or how much I would actually use throwing axes, but you can throw axes. Uh, we did get a field kit, by the way. Uh, so that field kit that we found inside of that secret, it refills its medical supplies off of the excess healing that we find laying around in the levels. And you just press the enter key whenever you want to use your field kit on yourself. Uh, it's basically like a personal little Estus flask that you carry around. And can I open this one? Nope, can't open that one. I mean, I can try to kick it, I guess. There haven't been a whole lot of doors that can be kicked open. Uh, you can go for this right here, but one thing I would urge you to note is that there's a ledge right here, and then if you time the jump right, you can use the ledge to get up to that other little secret up there, but it's got like a timing and a rhythm to it. Now I'm trapped inside just the depths of the earth where I'm sure methane and CO2 or... Or I'm sorry, carbon monoxide are probably going to kill me. Oh, I'm on fire. Let me jump in the water real quick then. Jump in the water. All right, so we've got a couple of things here. Unfortunately, the enemy's accuracy is just really, really, really good, so we have to be careful about how we engage when we're down in the water like this. The bullets do travel in the water, and they do travel normally. Uh, so it's not like real life where bullets slow down and no longer have, like, deadly force within, like, a foot of entering the water. Uh, it's quite different. Did that guy drop something? Oh, I thought he dropped something. It looked like he dropped some loot or something. All right, well, first aid kit me. There we go. Get me back up to 100 health. There's probably some kind of corridor or corner down in here that I can find, but... I don't want to look for it right now. I'm going to break these crates, though, if they break. Do they break? Nope. Okay. I, I had hoped maybe they would break, but nay. So it looks like there's a way out over there, but if we jump on top of this stuff, I'm willing to bet we can get up here. And yeah, we found all the dynamite in the world. And some magnum rounds. Did I even get a magnum? I did not, but we did find magnum bullets. So that's how the hell... Oh, I see what happened. Okay, so we're like down inside of like a strip mine right now. I was going to say, how did a truck get down here on its side on top of this? But now it makes sense after kind of reviewing the situation. I would recommend that when you're looking at these bodies from altitude, they add another isometric uh, billboarding effect on it. I talk about this every time I play a boomer shooter, but that effect right there where the body always turns to face you in 2D while you're on a 3D map is called billboarding. And some billboarding games, if you're looking at enemies from above, they'll have one from like a 45 downwards degree angle and then one from like a 90 degree downwards angle just to make it look like a tiny bit better when you're looking at bodies from altitude, which is something by and large that old games from this time period didn't really consider. But, you know, it's one of those things that I think modernizes a little bit and makes it feel a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, where am I trying to go right now? Oh, it's right here. There's a ledge up above these crates, but you couldn't see it very well because the texture blended together. Okay. You just throw a dynamite at me, dude? He totally did. He threw a dynamite at me. Luckily, the items don't get destroyed, but man, this is kind of an enclosed area to be chucking dynamites at people there, brother. 
Might be a might be a bit much, dude. Look at this guy. This guy got crushed under a rock. He got smushed in half. All right, first aid kit's been filled. I'm gonna have to use the shotgun. It's the only thing I really have ammo for. Waste those two idiots. Oh, I had to reload at precisely the wrong moment. There we go. We got him. Some more shotgun shells over there. Oh, you scared me there, pal. You made me jump. Oh, I probably could have... There was a lantern right there. I could have lit them all on fire and saved the ammo. But I didn't because I'm big, massive, dumb. Fair enough. I get like one of you guys to drop ammo. I'm becoming quite concerned about my safety here. And that was the last thing I needed to happen. Oh, there we go. More magnum rounds and stuff. Still don't have a magnum. Hey, there's the ammo. Very nice. Okay, so there's a stairwell that goes up over here. With all the magnum ammo they've been throwing at me, there's got to be a magnum around somewhere. Ow. I do like the little things like when you're firing your gun, if you look, there's shell casings all over the ground. And then, like, when you throw out magazines, the magazine actually stays there on the ground, like, perpetually. It's kind of cool. Like, nice little effects and stuff to kind of make the world feel a little bit more immersive and have a little bit more of an idea of, like, object permanence, I guess. Uh, lots of explosive barrels around here. Enemy bullets can light off explosive barrels, so be careful. I'm just going to try to kill these guys without using any ammo. Actually, there's 40 bullets right there. My man just threw dynamite over here. All right, we're gonna have to move in cover. Otherwise, we're gonna have a bad time. Ow, caught that one with my chest. I mean, I sort of feel like if I hang out down here long enough, they'll kill each other. Let me get some health back. Oh, dude. There's just so much dynamite running around. Oh, you messed up now. You fell. Dude, you were, like, actually in a really, really good bird's nest. But, like, where's your buddy at? I know you had a partner up here. Oh, did he fall, too? Oh, more bullets. Hold up. Yup. Lots and lots of bullets. I guess his buddy fell off the back and died. Fair enough. It's what he deserves, evil little cultist. Alright, now that I'm stocked up with ammo, I don't feel so, quite so bad about going in with this Sten gun. Uh, no caves, no secret looking things over here. Just a pickaxe. Yeah, I think it's mostly empty in here. I don't really see anything that looks particularly interesting. I don't know if this will actually break those barrels, but might as well try. Did not break the barrels. Barrels unbroken. Hello? Anybody inside my stony corridor that wants to do battle? Looks like the answer to that would be no. All right, well, let's go down this way and we'll see what we got rocking. Oh, brother. Almost got me. Although that doesn't leave me with a whole lot of options, does it? 
Nerp would be the answer to that question. So down, down we go. We're going down, down, down to Mephisto's Cafe. We're going down, down, down to Mephisto's Cafe. Doop, 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 doop. I don't see anything in here. I don't know if you have a breath meter in this game. I stayed underwater for like a while when I was playing earlier and like I didn't see myself lose health. But like you gotta figure there will be some health damage, right? Like I didn't specifically stay under until the bubble stopped like on purpose. Oh good, blood. Blood, blood, blood. Oh look at that, a lamp that's a skull. That's some uh, nice goth kid decor right there. Nice little dead guy right there. Yeah, nothing spruces a place up like a couple dead guys. Ooh, okay, yeah. Barrels full of gore, too. Oh, yeah, and dead guys suspended from the ceiling. Beautiful. Love what you've done with the place. Just absolutely, it's modern, but it's fresh. It's risque. But it's not afraid to be vulnerable. I like it. It's a good decorative strategy. Oh, these guys got cut in half. All right, big doom energy in here. Uh-huh, bear traps. Okay, yeah, probably deactivate those. Yeah, I feel safer now, sort of. Is that a door? Oh, it is. Okay. Well, there's a key. Lovely. That's a chainsaw. Gotta be up close if I want to get those guys. Bunch of ammo in there. I'll take that. Uh, give me the Steny boy. I think we're gonna need it. I could break these down. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. That's what's up. Alright. He's got a chainsaw! Wow, he just took a whole magazine from the Sten. Oh, it's like a nail bomb? Okay, alright, fair enough. Probably want to deactivate that too. Hello, boys. Let me put you out of your misery real quick. There we go. I don't know how many more of these guys are going to be kind of rolling around. But we've got the key to the mine, which I assume opens most of these gated doors right here. I can't guarantee that that information is accurate, but... Where is this taking me? I don't really know, but then again, it don't really matter. Because we have run out of time. This is the demo for Cultic. I like it a lot, actually. It is a punchy, stylized, early 90s, late 80s romp through video games. Like that entire time period where like Dark Forces was around, basically. And they have nailed the vibe very, very, very well. It doesn't actually feel like Doom. Like a lot, what I find with a lot of these games is they end up feeling like Doom wads. Which, if you don't know what a Doom Wad is, ask your dad. But anyways, uh, they a lot of the time these end up feeling like Doom Wads, where it's definitely like a reskinned, refactored, sort of recoded Doom with extra stuff added to it, sort of a la Brutal Doom. This one doesn't feel like that. This one feels like it was done entirely differently, uh, maybe from scratch even. Like, it's definitely got that vibe of kind of like the B-list first-person shooters from the early 90s, but there was a lot to love in those games. You know, Rise of the Triad, Redneck Rampage, like, Chex Quest, all of those sort of, like, side games that were always kind of, like, chasing down Doom. Like, I, I liked those games. I thought the, the side ones were equally as fun and interesting in their own way as, like, some of the major titles were. So my name is Splattercat. This is Cultic. I hope you guys liked it. If you don't know who I am or how you got here, uh, I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie gaming so that you don't have to.
Today we were playing Cultic. Tomorrow we will likely be playing something else. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for swinging through. And that's all that I got. Bye, everybody.